you record on there. So there we are. Amen. So welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Life Lessons Live. Uh, not Life Lesson Live, but Life Lessons <laughs> here with us as Words of Faith Church. And uh, we've been talking to you about the call to action. And that call to action is, is the call to grow and to show the world who God is. So we talked to you about several things on Sunday. And um, I want to hear from you because if we're having a call to action, we need to know what that call looks like. Um, what are we doing when we do that? And we gave you several things on Sunday uh, as we were teaching you this about what that call looks like. And so somebody tell me some of the things that you remember um, concerning that you took notes, you know, you should be taking notes if you intend to go back and study and all those great things and to meditate upon the seeds of the word that's been sown in your life. And listen to this, when I say appreciating God, you value the seed of the word that's being sown in your life. If it's not valuable to you, then you will be like a child, hear it, rise up, go play, do whatever it is you deem that's important or whatever in your life uh, and miss out what God's trying to do. So Dean Terry, I see your mic is hot. So tell me, tell me some things that stood out to you or that you remember when we started talking about this call to action. I know one thing you said that uh, we need to come in an agreement <clears throat> with, uh, with God, the things that God has spoken over our life. We need to be in agreement with God. Mm hmm that kind of stood out to me because, uh, I mean, as long as I've been sitting up under your teaching, God has said a lot, mm. still saying a lot, and he's still speaking. And, and that, you know, uh, God reminded me of some things that, that, uh, that you have spoken over my life. And, and, you know, I just truly believe that this is an hour for them things to come for. I know mm -hmm. I'm not in the same place I was, and I know that I don't grow, and I'm just in agreement with things that God has spoken over my life concerning ministry, concerning uh, a lot of things that he done said to me uh, concerning my life. And, you know, like you said, we have to agree with God, and we have to have the faith uh, to move towards some things as God has said, and what He's saying now, we got to have faith to move when mm -hmm. God. We got to believe God. Yes, we got to take God at His word, and we got to believe, and we got to pursue whatever God is saying. Because uh, I mean, that's what God's saying. That's that's God's intention for our life. When He, when the word is the word that He, even tonight, the word that He is speaking to us. That's 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 what he had. That's what his expectation of us. That's what he's looking for us to do. Mm -hmm. You know, come in agreement and move forward. Yeah. And doesn't and, and one of the things I, I remember teaching on Sunday is that it don't matter how long ago he declared that word over your life. He said it and he meant it. Um, you know, it took Abraham Abram 25 years to believe God for Isaac, amen. And, uh, and so it doesn't matter when he said it, it's the fact that he did say it. And what we gotta do is, is come to the place of agreeing and believing him and then we can begin experiencing it. That's a call to action. Faith is an action word. When faith becomes a fact, the fact becomes an act, becomes action. Matter of fact, the New Testament church in the book of Acts is the church of action. It's the church of action. Um, and so this is good. So this call to action, we got to grow and we got to show the world who God is. And to see and experience God like you've never seen and experienced him before. Um, and so we got to put some faith on it, don't we? Amen. Yeah, we got to put some faith on it. We got to agree, believe, amen, then do. Okay, so we're going to talk about that. Somebody else, something that we talked about on Sunday 
concerning this call to action. This call to action is also where we are making our public proclamations through our words and deeds. Mm -hmm. um, our actions are lining up with uh, the power that has been given to us, the dunamis power of the Holy that along with the Holy Spirit. So we're able to go out and give signs and wonders and miracles. Those are the things that should be following us. We're to say what God has said. We have, are to proclaim the gospel because that's the power of God into salvation. So our call to action is to make God known mm -hmm. by the way that uh, we carry ourselves and how we, how we treat others, the power of God using the gospel, using the gifts that he has given to us. That's good. And who does this impact when we do these things? We talk about the impact it would have. Of course, it impacts um, us because it does help to build up our most holy faith as we continue to, to pray and go about and doing these signs and wonders. But it also impacts different generations. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not just for us. It's for the generations to follow. It's for other nations. It's for all people. It can be impactful to everyone. Okay. So it impacts families and communities, yes, right? This is yes. how we change our communities. Your workplace. Yes, sir. Yeah, the workplaces, our city, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. This is the work of the ministry. Okay, this is the work of the ministry. This is that call to action. Okay. This is good. And so with that, these things we have to do on purpose, don't we? Hey, Gracie. <laughs> uh, she's trying to get the phone. Uh we got to do these things intentionally. We got to do it on purpose. But we got to value it. Do you value the words that God has spoken over your life? The word that have been prophesied about you. Uh, we talked about uh, when we are answering this call to action, we are telling the whole world, I'm saved. I'm redeemed. Isn't that right? So what, is, what does that mean to you? Is, is that not impactful? Is that not impactful? The Bible tells us, um, Psalms 106 and 10, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. And... Uh, so we have to be in a place of discovering and, and um, know that I am to recover because I'm saved, right? Yes. Um, I am restored. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Yes, sir. You've been set in right standing. You've been set up for regeneration, rejuvenation, prosperity. Okay. Um, this is a place of discovery and okay. recovery and empowerment. Okay. And how does, how does this get accomplished? Because the four dimensions of change is why, what, how, and when, right? Mm -hmm. And so we've covered these things. How do we do this? Because before we got saved, if we were doing all that we knew to do to uh, be successful or to, to, you know, do the best we could with what we do, but then we come into this discovery of salvation and all of us do it by what? How did Jesus do it? Uh-oh, y'all got to pay attention. See, that will, that will cause the enemy to cause you to forfeit what God has said, what he is saying, 
as well as what your inheritance is, being heirs and joint heirs with Christ. You do this by the power of his spirit. Yes. That's how Jesus accomplished all that he was sending the earth to accomplish. He came in the power of the spirit. Okay. That's the same way you're going to accomplish it. Right? Yes, sir. And we looked and we taught you on, on um, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's done what? Anointed you. Come on, guys. This is the dotting of the I's and crossing of the T's. Yes, sir. He's anointed us to preach the gospel. Okay. And remember, we taught you all about getting out of the religious box. That preaching is just not standing behind a pulpit, but your life has to preach. Right? Yes. Proclaim publicly and openly the power of this gospel? Yes, sir. And being able to break down what that means, what that salvation is and what it means to be saved because people have to understand that as well. Okay. And so what I'm, what I'm after, what I'm in search of is, is what do we understand? Because our, our inspiration has to be that of the word and the Holy Spirit that's inspiring us. Um, because John 6, 63 says his word is spirit and his word is life. It's not the typical life that we have when you're just sucking up air and, and, and eating and, 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 you know, doing the normal things. But this is the life that God intended for you to have. This is what comes by way of the anointing coming upon you and being filled with the spirit and you operating in the power of his spirit. Is this right? Okay. So y'all come on, talk to me. Talk to me, man. What does this call to action look like? What, what, what do we do? Because if, if, if the Holy Spirit is calling you to action, you need to know what that looks like and what am I to be doing? Because we'll go right back to doing life like the world and doing it as though um, he hadn't redeemed us and he hadn't anointed us. Is that a truth or no? Y'all distracted tonight? What is it? I know one thing you said, Bishop. Uh, we got to know that uh, we can't focus on our ability and doing nothing. And I know one thing you said, son, that, uh, you know, we need to know the way has already been made for us. And we don't need to be trying to make a way. You know, we, we need to be led by the spirit of God uh, I mean, we just need to stay in God, stay focused on God and do the things God to commission us to do and not be trying to uh, make our own way. Because, you know, if we walk in by faith, we already know the, may, the way has already been made. God has already made a way for all of us. Mm -hmm. But we got to believe that. We got to know that. And, and you know, we got to uh, walk in that, knowing that the way has been made. Okay. And if we do that, we can uh we can do the things God done commissioned us to do. Uh you know, the call to action. God God done called us and 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 uh he done called he done brought us out from among them. Uh I mean we 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 separated now. The, the, the teaching that we get, and a lot of people ain't getting that. We, we've been developed for the work of the ministry now. I mean, and, and we should be so developed and equipped. We ought to be going out teaching others, showing others the way. 
and and uh, enlightening them and bringing them out of the things that they're going through now. Okay. That's the call to action that I'm, you know, that's some of the call to action that God is calling us to do. He's calling us to, you know, be about his business, the thing that he done commissioned us to do. Okay. Is it, is it clear to us what he's commissioned us to do? It's to go out and make disciples of men. We got to okay. teach people. Okay. And the, and, the, and the psalmist said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, right? What does redeemed look like? You know what? What do, what does that look like? It, it, it is who I am, the way I behave, the way I think, how I feel, proclaim that I'm redeemed, that I'm saved, and as we go about our day to day, because what you do daily determines your future, right? Every day I have to lay stake, lay claim that I'm saved. I am redeemed because the enemy comes to steal. To steal means to take something that, that was once your possession. So he comes to steal from that from you. But you got to know, no, it's mine. John says mine, mine. That's what he says when he knows something that he is. And you try to take from him, he says, no, mine, no, mine. And he will fight you for it. Do you hear me? You better fight the good fight of faith and don't give up no territory. Okay, you need to lay stake in the fact I'm saved. I am redeemed. Right? And know what that looks like got to be clear to us what that looks like and it happens by the power of his spirit right jesus did the work what did he tell us our work was to believe on the one whom he sent to believe that i came to save you mm -hmm. okay so one of the things that we have to do as believers is you got to receive his ministry Okay, you got to receive it. And receiving it is, is that I, I'm thankful, appreciative to you that you saved me. You've healed my body, Jesus. You've provided for me, right? You've delivered me. I have a Psalm 91 blessing you've provided for me. Nothing shall come near my dwelling, right? That's the stake that you have to drive in the ground with the word of God. Now, remember we talked about, I think I was talking about you, I'll be teaching in so many settings, uh, that you can't have faith of the head. This got to be in your heart. If it's not in your heart, it's not going to come out of your mouth. And you know where we really are when the, the Lord prepares a table in the presence of your enemy, when your adversary shows up, when opposition occurs, that's when you need to use faith. You ain't got to use no faith when there's no opposition, when there's no enemy before you. Okay? Right? And know that that's called oppression. But you've been given power over the oppressor. Oppression comes from Satan. Right? Y'all can open your mics up and talk. I'm not, I'm not trying to teach tonight. I want you to teach. I'm trying to draw something out of you. Because the call to action, the river has to flow. It's got to be about like rivers of living water in you. It flow on demand. Okay.
Okay. Come um, on. This, uh, that's just like at our job. Uh, it was supposed to be closing April 30th. And we got the notice that we're actually going to stop seeing clients March 31st. Mm -hmm. And so everyone is like panicking and, 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 and running around and they don't know what to do and they don't know how to act. But in, in this point, they're calling me. Like my bosses and other people's bosses are calling me a, as the voice of reason because they're not sure how to handle certain things. And because I tell them it's going to be okay because I am safe. And what I mean by that is I'm protected from hurt, harm, and danger. So what they are oppressed about, the job <coughs> making and, and things shifting around, I'm not nervous and I'm not upset because this yeah. is a thing that happened because I'm a tither and seed sower. I know that I've been provided for and I'm protected and favored and what I need will come to me. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't, I don't work. But that means that provision has also already been made. I have to be ready to receive. Okay. Let, let me give you let me give you a testimony uh, as well as this call to action as the saints of the Most High God. We call things to be not as though they were. When we see people in a panic, we tell God, "Thank you, Lord, that this job ain't going nowhere. That everybody is secure." They got, they got replaceable income. Matter of fact, God, I thank you that they're going to have a greater income. You can declare those things. When I was working for Delta Machine, they was trying to close us for about seven years. They steady yes, trying to sabotage and close us, but we praying, all right, praying, and it kept open. As a matter of fact, business got better, okay? Just Amen. because of what they're saying don't mean that what it's going to be. What we need to do is, is realize that's why that's why people need to acknowledge and know that the saints is in the house. Tell them, guys, it's going to be all right. God going to make sure everyone only stop saying that it's closed or it's closing and get a word from the Lord. Don't repeat what they say. Say what God is saying, because that thing could stay open to this time next year until God makes a way for everyone to get into replacement or uh, better jobs and all those different things. What we need to be praying is that, Lord, I thank you that we've got better jobs and, uh, and you can testify these things by saying, guys, I'm a tither and God's gonna make sure that everything is gonna be all right. Amen, what I'm believing and praying for is such and such and such and such. Why don't y'all join in with me? And that's how you begin to settle the chaos. We got to be sound voices in the midst of chaos because of who we know and what we know and the uh, and the influence that we have with God. Is that all right? Come on, God didn't cause the sun to go, to back up. God didn't add 15 years to 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 lies. Uh, he even part of the Red Sea. He's done all types of things. Am I right? Praise God. So you can ask God and say, Lord, keep this job open throughout the summer. Huh? Well, you were tired, right? Not, I mean, yes. you can say those things. Our Don't repeat what they say. We're, yes, sir. Like our location is closing, but we have the opportunity to move to other locations and still do work. So absolutely, we're not completely done. So there's still... There's still favor in that place. Yes. Okay. Just hear the word of the Lord. Yes, sir. I hear, hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Okay. And that's the essence of calling things to be not as though they were. That's the essence of the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availed much. Okay. When they finally closed Delta Machinery, they gave them people compensation packages they hadn't heard of around here. They sent them folk to school. They gave them uh, 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 insurance for a year, two years or something like that, paid for them to go to school, gave them severance packages. 
all those different types of things. Y'all done heard some of them companies around here. They threw them people out on the street and took their 401ks, took their 401ks and told them, y'all ain't got no job tomorrow, get out. Hmm. We got to know when we pray and we hear from God. And listen, you stand in the gap for mankind. You stand in the gap for your community. You stand in the gap for your city. You declare a thing and it shall be established. This makes sense to you? That's the benefits of being the redeemed. That's the benefits of being saints of the most high God. Okay. Wow. All of this is about identity. Knowing who we are in Christ. Knowing how he has empowered us and knowing what our call to action is. The spirit of the Lord has come upon you to do what? To proclaim, preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. It's Isaiah 61, New Testament trans or New Testament parallel scriptures, Luke 4, 18. That's to it. preach the gospel. Heal the sick. Yes. That's right. a call to action, ain't it? Yes, sir. So what are we saying? What are we doing? How we behaving? How we thinking? And how we feeling? <laughs> you got to identify, listen, I understand oppression, but oppression is, is coming because of what I'm called to do. Amen. But greater is he that is enemy than he that is in the world. I have power over all the work of the enemy. You believe that? You got to believe that. You got to believe I have power over all the work of the enemy. Why? Because of Christ. So oppression, okay, is a part of this work of the enemy. For then that will live godly shall suffer persecution. Okay. Paul talked about the thorn in the flesh. Paul talked about his infirmities. Right? We got to know what the Bible teaches, not just what it says. How did Paul deal with the thorn in his flesh? How did Paul deal with the infirmities? All of those things were oppressions. Okay, his infirmities, infirmity, that word infirmities is not sickness, only meant sickness or disease two times in the Bible, but it was spoken, I think, 56 times. It was all about how I, how I, my mind, my physical body was under attack, but I wasn't sick. It was just, I was experiencing resistance. The call to action. What does that mean to you? Well, Bishop, when you say call to action, I automatically think about um, Matthew 28. Um, like, like you said, teach to teach to teach. Teaching, um, explaining, uh, having... Uh, answers mm -hmm. resolutions um being discipled myself receiving that so that i can help to teach others those things that i have learned mm -hmm. um evangelism whether that be you know teaching someone encouraging someone exhorting someone using the gifts that god has given me um 
you know, letting my life preach and sometimes open up my mouth if I need to. Like when you say call to action, that's that's what it's my lifestyle at this point is who okay. I become. Okay. So we got to stay on top. We, we, we got we got to stay on top. We can't get under the oppressor. We got to stay on top. And I do that through through the, the weapons that he has given to me. Yes, I got the Holy Ghost. I can pray in the spirit when I when I when I have infirmities, when I experience all this opposition uh, against me, either in my mind, I, there's a weakness in my mind, my will. Uh, I'm growing weary in my well doing. Uh, you know, my emotions are a little bit off. What do we do? We pray in the Holy Spirit. Okay. And then you become thankful. I thank you that every one of my infirmities is being dealt with. Hey, plan by Satala by my mind is strong. I have the mind of Christ. My will is in agreement with God, not my will, but thy will be done. I thank you, Lord. I'm emotionally stable. I am prospering and I am health as my soul is prospering. Right now, I'm dealing with the weaknesses that is in my soul. I will pray in the spirit until I feel empowered by you. You begin to declare what you believe. Amen. And you understand the purpose in which it was sent, what it is to do. That's why we got to have spiritual intelligence. When I pray in the Holy Ghost, my faith is being built up. I'm being edified. I'm getting loose from low self-esteem and, and, and wrong opinions of myself. I'm also uh, dealing with the weakness that is in my mind, my will, and my emotions when I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. Is that right? And so when you pray, those are also what you, what you proclaim what you declare out of your mouth because then you know it's in your heart. That is what a worshiper's life looks like. A worshiper declares things. It's not asking for things. Oh, wow. Because you understand the power you have with God. You have whatsoever you say it. Worshippers declare things. Be healed. Not heal me if it be thy will. You declare I'm healed. Right? Amen. Worshippers declare things. When God looked at the world, and it was out without form and void, void, he said, let there be light, and there was light. That comes out of faith. Faith is action. The gift of faith is action. It's called a power gift. That's operating in the power that has been given to you by God, both exousia and dunamis. Okay, this is the call to action. Faith without works is dead. Faith without an action behind it is dead. You will die slow if you don't allow faith to work for you. Because we walk by faith, not by sight. We make progress by faith, by faith. I am saved by grace through faith. I'm continuously delivered and healed. Come on now, protected, provided for. It, come on now, all the things, by what? Faith. Yes, Stephanie? Okay, hey, Bishop, question. You said worshipers declare things. Mm -hmm. We don't ask. Right. Mm -hmm. So my question is, how do we I have two questions? First one, how do we know for certain um, 
what we should be declaring about specific situations or circumstances? Because we know the promise. Okay. We know the promise and we've been in the face of God. Okay. We Second. prayed in the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. And so when we pray in the Holy Spirit, we're praying to get the mind of God. And then when we have the mind of God, we say what God is saying or what God said. Okay. The Holy Ghost will remind you of what he said and will tell you what he's saying. What our thing is to, to do is to bind the mind of Christ to us. And we must yield ourselves to that mind. Let that mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. And we need to know when we out of our mind. See, the only mind that's right for the righteous is the mind of Christ. <laughs> Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The mind for the righteous is the mind of Christ. And so that's why we proclaim and we, 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 we bind the mind of Christ to us and we, we confess that I have the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. I have the mind of Christ. Okay. How do successful people think? Like God. This is the call to action. There is a work of faith that you are called to. Look at 2 Thessalonians 11, 1, 11. This is the easy English version. So we always pray for you. Our God has chosen you to be his own people. And you must continue to be the kind of people that he wants. So we pray that he will be happy about you. We pray also that God will work powerfully in you. So then he will make it possible for you to do every good thing that you want to do. You want to do those, those good things because you believe Christ. We pray this so that our other people will say good things about our Lord. Jesus, because of you. They will see the great things that he has done for you. Also, Jesus will cause people to say good things about you. This will happen because our God and the Lord Jesus Christ are so very kind to you. That's easy English. Let me read it to you in the King James Version. Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him according to the grace of our Lord God, grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So this is this work of faith. Faith produces action. It produces forward progress. We walk by faith. We make progress. Does that make sense? In all opposition, it's just simply the trying of your faith. Do 
do I believe I have dominion and I have authority? Do I believe that that I'm I'm the saved of the Lord? I'm the redeemed of the Lord. Am I able to to allow uh, a, a this revelation that I have of myself in Christ and who Christ is to vilely overthrow everything that's been oppressing me? Because when there's a revelation, there's also a, uh, a, 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 a violent overthrow. Okay. There's a revelation. Uh, a violent overthrow happens. That's why Christ said to Peter, he said to him, he said, listen, Flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. Okay. You got to say, let the revolution begin. I'm saved. I'm the redeemed of the Lord. Let everything, let your word, amen, destroy every root, everything that is oppressing me. Let the revolution begin this year. This year, I will no longer be oppressed. God, you're going you're gonna to be so very God in me this year. I'm about to experience everything uh, that you promised to me. I want to live like I ain't never lived before, do things I ain't never done before. That's got to come out of your mouth because that's what you believe. That's the call to action. that's the evidence I've, I'm growing because when I grow it shows when I know I grow and when I grow I show and then when I show Everybody know. Our call is to make sure God is known, to know God and to make him known. To know God and to make him known. Huh? Arise, shine. The glory of the Lord is upon you. Hmm? If you don't know what that means, you need to be in the face of God. God, what do you mean when you say that about me? You prophesied that about me. What does that mean? Don't assume that you know and don't religiously process that. Make sense? Y'all come on, talk back to me. I was just thinking, Bishop, uh, I was still there, a call to action, you know, to me, that's, that's every day. We are, I mean, we, we should be doing something every day. I mean, our, our mind should, should, uh, I mean, we should look for opportunities in every, every aspect. I mean, even people we meet, uh, conversations or whatever we, look for opportunity to minister to people, which and I do every day. I, I just use this for, uh, I was asking a guy about a mechanic and he gave me his number and I called him. And uh, he said he was at the doctor's office. It might be a while before I can do it. And he said he was shallow with sickness in his body. And immediately, you know, I didn't hesitate. I asked him, did he, you know, I told him I believe in the power of God. He, I believe God. Uh, can heal his body. And I asked him, did he believe that? He said, yeah. I asked him, could I pray with him? And mm -hmm. he let me pray with him right there on the phone. And, and, you know, I could just feel God when I was praying and we was agreeing with his healing, you know, that, that, that really made my day. I went through the day with joy, just uh, an opportunity to be able to minister to him, you know, concerning his healing. And, I mean, I look for opportunities in any 
no matter what, even in conversation, people be talking. If I if I get a chance, I'm gonna say something about the Lord or, or try to enlighten them on whatever is going on in their life. You know, people all around us, somebody's going through something every day. And we is there to help people. You know, mm -hmm. we, we we supposed to have the knowledge of God to help people in whatever they're going through every day. Okay. If we we need to think that away, we need to know that's what God got us here for. And that's mm -hmm. what we in this ministry here. And that's what we've been developed and equipped for to 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 do that. We ain't we ain't just having church. I mean, mm -hmm. we learning of God, we getting the wisdom and knowledge of God on our life. And uh to go out and help other people. Okay. G Jesus came to um, to overthrow all the work of the enemy, right? And so we we did too. That's why he saved us to overthrow all the work of the enemy. So when we do that, the Bible describes it as that everywhere he went, he went about doing good. What is good? The gospel. Whatever there was a need for, whether it was raising the dead, healing the sick, casting out demons, okay, uh, causing one to be saved, forgiveness of sins, whatever there was a need, this good news, this gospel, who was the, the, the very essence of who he was, he went about doing good, okay, and that is proclaiming this gospel with power and power and in deed. Now, with a, I, this is something that just rose up uh, to me to pose the question. We must be consciously aware of the enemy's oppression of ourselves because if you're oppressed, you're not going to answer the call because you're dealing with your own stuff. This is what I mean. You got to stay on top. And remember, peace isn't the absence of trouble. Peace is knowing that this too shall pass. And that I'm saved. I'm delivered. I'm protected. I'm favored of God. Irregardless of my own abilities, I rely on your ability. And that's what worshipers, who worshipers are, they believe in God's ability to be God. And we need to know when we shrunken back into our own ability. And it's easy to do if you if you if you if you don't allow your mind to be stayed on him and you focus, you stay focused and stay mission conscious. There's sometimes you gotta not have time for it. Some things you can't have time for no more. Remember what you tolerate, okay? Silence is agreement and tolerance is compromise that turns into agreement. So you gotta know what am I tolerating? in my life? Am I tolerating being oppressed? Am I tolerating this? Am I tolerating that? Do I agree with this? And you got to be honest. Do I still agree with that? Do, do, hello? There's some things because faith means I've got to disagree with something and come in agreement with something else. But you could have faith in what, what's oppressing you. You can have faith in what Christ came to deliver you from. understand this i believe you guys know this see faith is abstract okay it's abstract it's not tangible until you draw it out of heaven and most of us have little concrete lines concrete means is what i see with my eyes what i feel okay and listen, and my old ways of thinking. That's reality to you. 
but now the kingdom has become your reality, which is abstract until you continue in it. And then it becomes your reality. It's called transformation, metamorphosis. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so you can show that which is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. But you've got to be solid on what the will of God is. Irregardless of, of your opinions, your past experiences, your education, your, 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 uh, what your will is, you've got to say, not my will, but thy will be done. And until that really gets in your heart, it's going to be internal struggles. It's, it's, it's trying to live in two kingdoms. It's called being double-minded. It's called straddling the fence. But this is what the Bible says about us. Or what the, what the word says. Either you hot or you cold. If you are lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. You have to make a choice. I choose Jesus. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I am saved. I'm the saint of the Lord. I am a saint of the most high God. And irregardless of the opinions of others, your flesh, your past experiences, what, what nay, nay, them and boo, boo, them and, and cousin, and cousin Jack Lee going to do and all of that. I am saved. And I am the redeemed of the Lord. And this is what I'm going to experience. And this is how I'm going to live. I'm, I've made my choice. I'm not trying to fit in any longer. Right? I mean, y'all let me know how you feel about this. I'm just... The word will begin to bring separation. That's what sanctification means, to set you apart. It's going to bring, begin separating you from everything that's opposing your life and that is, is not um, um, uh, deemed necessary in your life in Christ. Thinking, okay, it'll separate you from, from sickness, disease, lack, uh, oppression, depression, emotional instability. He said, I came to make you whole if you would just believe. Yes, Stephanie. So, Bishop, you know, as you were talking about oppression, my question is, um, oppression, well, statement, then question, oppression is subtle, I think. So how, yes. how do we begin to identify the subtleties of oppression? When I am not uh, demonstrating the will of God, the promises of God. If he says I am to have joy when I'm not, when I don't have any joy. Okay. When the word of God says I am to have peace, Jesus said, I leave you peace. I give you peace when I don't have any peace. Okay. When, when whatever, if I'm experiencing anything other than what I should be experienced, when, when I declare I am saved. 
Sickness and disease is oppression. Depression is oppression. Okay. Wrong emotions is oppression. Lack is oppression. Are we understand these are things that we got to be conscious of. You're like, this is oppression. Those are all things that before Christ you learn to live with and to function with. You learn to function with it. You learn to live with it. You learn how to maneuver and navigate in it. Rather than say, this is oppression. And I've got to get my mind out so the rest of me can follow. And then even after you, after it, it comes into the, to the mind, it's got to get into your heart. And when it gets into your heart, it'll begin coming out of your mouth. When it begins coming out of your mouth, it begins to become a creative force. Sometimes we made inner vows to stuff that Jesus came to deliver us from. And the vows we need to make is unto the Lord. Commit our ways unto the Lord. I'm committed to this word. I'm committed to this life that this word produces for me. I refuse to not have peace. Okay. And you and you say it until it happens. And you don't change what you said. I said it and I meant it. God meant it when he said it. And I'm going to say what God says concerning my life. And anybody that has a problem with it is an indication that they're not supposed to be in your life. And it's okay. Get delivered. You can't talk to me about oppression. You got to know when I'm I'm under oppression. <laughs> okay. Good oh, question, okay. Steph. Come on, come on, Sam. Two. So this Sam, is my two. question. If you're a person like myself that that hmm, sometimes that is not afraid of change, I'm a person that's not afraid of change, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> of transition i actually embrace these things and they excite me how can i help a person that is maybe not so excited or they're afraid like earlier you know you were saying that of as a born again believer which i believe i can decree and declare a thing that you know we will not close we will remain open but for me personally i'm excited about the possibility of transition and what can happen but i mm -hmm. don't want to uh be out of the will of god let me say that does yeah. that does my question make sense yeah okay well that's where prayer comes in and remember your life don't belong to you sometimes it's about others you got a whole group of people that's 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 terrorized it ain't about you right now now it's about stabilizing them and showing them the essence of what it's like to live for Jesus. That they never have to feel that way and experience like that again. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. See, sometimes we're ready to make an exit and God said, ain't time for you to go yet. Ain't time for you to go yet. We still got some stuff to do. 
Think about them. You were always here for them. I could have had you anywhere. You were always here for them. I know you thought it was about you, but you were always here for them. See, this is that call to action. That makes sense? I mean, listen, these are responsibilities that God gives to us. Our communities is our, our, is our responsibility. Our cities is our responsibility. Okay. Yeah. And so when we raise up our replacements, that's when God can give us an exit plan. Come on. That was Jesus thing. Jesus said, listen, guys, we ain't got time to be playing around. I got to get out of here. I, I got to go take my rightful place. Send the right hand of the father. Therefore, y'all got to get this. Now, let me encourage y'all. I'm going to send y'all a confidence when I leave. Okay. So I'll forever be with you. Matter of fact, it's going to take you into even another dimension. You're going to have power. Power to do the things that, that you saw me do. Okay. You're going to be able to take on my very nature. So y'all be all right. Let not your heart be troubled. Quit being so emotional. Okay. God had to drop us in the middle of hell sometime into the jungle to prove that he is God. And also, amen, to bring as many out as you can. Okay. So you got to say, God, is the assignment over here? If he don't say the assignment over, then y'all ain't going nowhere. When I came out of corporate America, I'm walking down the aisle, minding my business, content, all those good things. And the Lord says that your season is up here. I'm like, what you mean? Things going good now. He said, you've learned what you wanted to learn, what I needed you to learn. Now I want you to take what I've taught you and take it to my church. The biggest corporation there is in the world. They just don't know how to function as one. They're fragmented. Don't know how to be fitly joined together. Every joint supplying every need. Competing with one another. Have a zeal, but not according to the knowledge. Don't even have a fundamental understanding of the main thing, and that's salvation. Hitting and missing here and there. It's not everybody. I'm not speaking, you know, a blanket statement. I'm just saying for the most part. That's why I say take, take, some, take some surveys. Ask people who, who are confessing and believing and say, what does it mean to be saved, y'all? And see what their response is. Opportunity to teach. See, God gives us opportunities, but when we don't know what to do with the opportunity, we don't do what we should do with the opportunity. Remember, it's about the mission. It's always about the mission. God got you. But what he needs is a people that will fulfill the mission, the commission. And the he got you. You got to get to the end. He got me. I'm good. I'm saved. I'm the redeemed of the Lord. He got me. Everything else is about the mission. That's what I'm talking about, Deacon You're trying to create a life when God's already given you a life. You need to walk in the steps that he's ordered. And you got to deal with your insufficiencies. The insufficiencies is when we don't know who and what Christ and the Holy Ghost have done for us, we feel insufficient. So we'll abort the mission because we feel insufficient. And we'll take on other stuff. Then we start having people give us vision boards and we'll start trying to create a life. When he said, I've already given you one. If you lose your life, you'll find it. Just be about the mission. 
Lord, what do you want to do today? Lord, why am I here? Why am I here, God? You're there to learn or you're there to, 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 to impart, to teach or whatever. If you're there to learn, learn what you need to learn, then he can, he can get you out of there. And then you need to ask him, what do you want me to learn? See, we don't have enough intimate conversations with God. We assume we know what we should be doing. When you need to be asking questions, why am I here? And he can tell you. He can also tell you when you finish. When, when are we finished? When we've completed the task. Makes sense. We were called according to his purpose. Get it. Somebody say, I got to get that, man. I got to get that. The only reason why I'm alive is because of his purpose. This is the only reason why I'm still alive is because of his purpose. It's the only reason why I'm saved is because of his purpose. All things are going to work together for my good because of his purpose. Come on. Quit listening to all of these many voices that are in the land. They're trying to feed you with stuff and get your attention on things when you need to become single-eyed to where you don't have an identity crisis. That everything is having you pull this way and pull that way. Your emotion got you on this and your, 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 your what you, you know, just stuff. Makes sense. I'm telling you, I want you to get to the place of having joy, man. In peace and know what, know what causes you to experience the fullness of joy. We've been raised up on these temporary states of happiness. Buy you something new, do this, go here, eat this, all that. And, and we just think we in hog heaven. And then you try and find out that that had to go down so quick and then you be chasing another high. Chase another one, chase No, he wants you to live in a state of joy. Doing what he wants, living how he wants you to live. And he'll start tipping you and doing things for you that you ain't creating with your own hands. Come on. He'll have you in places and doing things and, and others doing things for you that you ain't even thinking about. You ain't even asked for now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think. It's done according to the power that worketh within you. You still in that slave mentality. It was better when we were making bricks. It was better when I was doing it with my own hands. Ain't nobody going to do it if I don't do it for myself. Slave mentality. Oppression. And quit letting the world give you reasons to celebrate. They come up with a day every day. It's this day. It's that day. It's this day. You got this day. It's dog day. It's, 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 it's curly hair day. It's straight hair day. It's crooked eye day. Somebody got twisted mouth day. Somebody got a short leg day. It's a day. Everybody a day. Everybody celebrate this day. Quit letting folk give you a reason to celebrate. Celebrate from within. When you get delivered from those carnal things that put you in a box and have you tugged around like a puppet on a string, okay? He's trying to bring separation from you and the world because he's called you into his kingdom. He told us not to be conformed to this world. Get it. Say, I gotta get that. I gotta get that. I gotta get that. I gotta get that. 
And when you say things out of your heart, not my will, but your will be done, it begins to bring separation from the world. And it begins to draw into your life the will of God. And you'll find out some things are optional. but not necessary. You make them necessary when they are optional. And when, they, when you've made them necessary and they're optional, you depressed because you thought it was necessary and God said it was optional. Hmm? You know what God calls that? Needy. And when you start telling God, you are everything I need when I need you to be it. Because you are a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Does this make sense? Hebrews 11 and 6. Without faith is impossible to please him. Them that come to God must believe that he is. He's what? Everything I need you to be when I need you to be it. And he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Okay. Tanisha, I see your hand. Sorry, I was in a Holy Ghost flow. Come on with your question. Oh, no, because you, I failed my call to action today. Okay. On my job with my boss. Mm. And you. You answered the reasons why I failed. Okay. And what I should have been doing. Okay. Because we had, I've been asking, you know, God, just show me when we have a, a surprise visit from our regionals. Okay. Because my boss always goes crazy and berserk whenever they show up. <laughs> like crazy berserk shifts the whole atmosphere. Everything changes like chaos. Okay. And a surprise visit came today. Usually okay. we know when he's coming. Didn't even know he was coming. It was my time to declare in that place, declare over her, speak what was going to happen and how it was going to be. And I got wrapped up in her. Okay. Acting and carrying on. And then I noticed how the spirit was jumping off on other employees. And I was... <laughs> Tending to them when I was supposed to be, like you said, it's not about us. It's about others we're supposed to be reaching, others mm -hmm. we're supposed to be gathering. And I missed my moment today. Okay. I did. Okay. So thank you for clarifying that and helping me understand how I lost it and why I lost it. Okay. So thank Praise thank God. Amen. Thank you for receiving that. God's so every day he's developing us every day. He's cultivating who he is in us and what he would have us to be doing. And there are opportunities. God presents opportunities to us. Okay. And when preparation and opportunity intersect, we have success. And when we get, we get ourselves washed and separated from this world, we can be more conscious, more mission conscious of what God is wanting, what God is needing. And when you take care of what God needs, you better be sure he's going to take care of all that you need exceedingly, exceedingly abundantly above. Okay, those things. And this the call to action. It's the call to action. Okay. It's a call to action. So I pray that this is this has helped. Guys, we got to get to this thing. God, I am the called according to your purpose. Every area of your life that you're in, God, why am I on this job? Why are these people in my life? Okay. What 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 why why or, or, or what do I need to be doing? You know, having those conversations with God. Okay, so that we'll be about his purpose. 
You know what his purpose is to reveal his glory. That's his purpose for his life. And listen, you can't reveal his glory in the glory not be beneficial to you. You just got to make up your mind to do that. And that requires presenting yourself as a living sacrifice. That sacrifice is, is, is giving up what I want to do, the way I want to think, the way I feel about a thing. And I want to do it, do what you want to do, how you want to do it. And I want to think the way that you think. That's the sacrifice. It's not suffering. The suffering is, is the putting down of your own will. That's the suffering. And if you're a strong will person, oh my God. You definitely got to say to God, not my will, but thy will be done. More than others. Okay, more than others. And you got to know that. There ain't nothing wrong with that. But you got to know that about you. Yes, Stephanie, did you have your hand up? Okay, you just raising your hand. Yeah. I'm one of them, more than others. <clears throat> Help me, Lord. <laughs> and that doesn't mean anything is wrong with you. Amen. Does that make sense? You just got to know that. That's called maturity. And listen, some got to repent. Lord, I have been a good steward over this word. Lord, I'm not, I'm not all in all of my getting, getting understanding. I just got to be honest. I don't understand your word. Remember, to know him and to see him is to discern him, to discover him, to come to know him, to understand him, to have visitations from him and to experience him, okay? And you gotta be honest and don't be faking it till you make it. And don't know lyrics to songs and call that the word. And now your word is listening to lyrics to songs and most of them songs ain't scriptural. They leave off the, the part that makes the difference. They talk about being blessed or they won't talk about being obedient. Hmm? Won't he do it? He will when you obey his statutes and his commandments. Leave that part off because that don't sell. And that don't emotionally manipulate you because that puts a check in your rebellion. It puts a check in your insufficiencies. It puts a check in your, in your lack of, of knowing your sufficiency is not of yourself. It's of God. It causes you to be abide in him and his word abide in you. It causes you to dwell in the secret place. Does that make sense? It causes sanctification to have to come upon you. And you got to burn your boats. See, some ain't willing to burn their boat. They want to get in the boat and take a cruise, but they don't want to stay out on the water. <laughs> okay, you, you, you got to get rid of all of that. I'm out here now. I said that I'm out here now. And now I got to keep my faith up in order to stay out here. Matter of fact, I got to go from faith to faith because the faith I had last year ain't going to be enough to sustain me this year. Therefore, there's some things I got to do different. 
with every promotion requires a different level or another level of devotion. And I'm more devoted to God this year because I'm being conformed to the image of his son because that's why that's the purpose of God for my life is to be conformed into the image of his son that he might be the firstborn amongst many brethren. This makes sense to you? That's the kingdom, guys. That's the gospel. That's being a people of purpose and power and influence. Answering the call to action. We're going to go more into it. We're going to talk about it in Ephesians. You know, we're predestined before the foundation of the world. Man, this just gives me more confidence. Gives me more confidence. We're going to talk about uh, pressing. What does it mean to press toward the high call? Okay. What does it mean to walk worthy of the call? Not from your self-worth, but accepting responsibility and answering the call. Okay. We got, got worth, we got to walk worthy of that call, not self-worth. It's not about our value. It's about seeing and understanding the responsibility of that call. Okay. And then the greater truth is that the gifts and calls of God are with our repentance. I don't care where you've been, what you've done, what you've been through. God is not taking it back. Okay. He's not ashamed. Amen. He's not changing his mind. He ain't repenting about calling you. He made his mind up who can turn him. Now, what you got to do is make your mind up. Okay. And get to revealing the glory of the Lord. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to go there. We're going to study all of that. That's where we go on Sunday. Okay. Amen. Listen, I love you guys. That's all our time we got tonight. I need one person to tell me something that they learned tonight or stood out tonight. Worshippers are supposed to declare. They're not supposed to ask. Yeah. Yeah. When you come out of worship, man, you declare and stuff. You got the mind of God now. <laughs> Amen. All right. All right. All right. All right. 